Having lived through a great and terrible war, UNESCO's founding states saw it their sacred duty to support democratic principles of dignity, equality, and mutual respect. Today, 65 years later, UNESCO has made great progress in promoting these ideals. The past year has been an incredibly busy one for us, and we've worked with friends and partners to support girls' education, to promote media freedom, to combat racism, to support scientific cooperation, and to build new public-private partnerships. In short, we're working hard at the U.S. delegation to contribute American energy in support of UNESCO's goals and the important reforms being carried out by Director General Bukaba and her team. We have traversed with the United States many exciting moments this particular year and the past year since the last 4th of July. And I think one of the most exciting moments was the launch of the Global Partnership for Girls and Women's Education, the Secretary of State Hillary Rodham Clinton. The presence of the Secretary of State at UNESCO marked the highest level visit of a U.S. official in a long time. It is a very positive sign that there is an increased trust in the capacity of UNESCO to deliver its global agenda on the part of the United States, our largest contributor. Uh, the Revolution and the French Revolution and many other rivers coming into the stream is something that, of course, is at the heart of all that UNESCO does. Within UNESCO, we need to continue to address what are the inalienable rights with which we are endowed. How do they actually uh, play out? For example, as uh, head of the science sector, I personally believe that all human beings have the right to have the capability to contribute to science and not just benefit from science. And we need to work on developing the scientific capacity around the world and giving all of our youth the chance to do that.